everyone, I'm Jamie with the Utah Education Network, and this is UEN Nearpod News. We're one year into our Nearpod contract, and across the state, Nearpod is being used in almost all of our schools to engage students in learning while gathering valuable assessment data to help target their needs. At the start of the school year, Nearpod launched a new assessment type called Drag and Drop. This assessment type makes sorting, Venn diagrams, sentence structures, timelines, and so much more so easy in Nearpod. So first, let me show you some examples of how drag and drop works, and then we'll jump in and create our own. In this example, students are using words to label different parts of a plant. So they'll click here on the left and just drag and drop to each section to label parts of a plant. Now the teacher in this example brought in a background image and then used the drag and drop feature to create the labels. In this next example, again the teacher brought in a background image but is using pictures instead that students can drag and drop. So this time we're labeling the solar system. We can also use drag and drop for math. So we're just dragging one minute equals 60 seconds. And in this example, the teacher did bring in their own, but there is a pre-built background that is similar to this that you could use straight from Nearpod. The last example here is an English language arts example. And in this example, you'll see that you can reuse some of the words. So in the drag and drop creator, you can choose if students can use each label once or multiple times. So in this example, you'll notice that the word still stays there, so they can use it multiple times. Okay, let's create our own drag and drop activity. There are a couple of ways that I can do this. If I have a lesson already created, then I can go into my lesson, I can click on add new, select activity, and then select drag and drop. If I want to create a standalone activity that's not within a lesson, I can come up here to the top, click on create activity, and then select drag and drop. From here, the tool is going to look the same, whether I'm in a lesson or I'm creating a standalone activity. Before you get started, I suggest that you gather all of your collateral so that you have all of your images ready to go and your background ready to go um, before you start building. My first step is going to be to add instructions. This drag and drop is about animal habitat, so I'm going to ask the question, where do these animals live? You can also add additional instructions if needed. Next, I'll select a background by clicking Add Background down here in the bottom right corner. Nearpod has a few backgrounds that are preloaded for you, or you can click Upload Image and add your own background. For this example, I'm just going to select three column background, and then I'm going to label each of my columns using these Draw It tools down here at the bottom. So I'm going to click on the text tool. My first animal habitat is going to be the mountains. So I'm going to um, type mountains and then I can resize this and move it where I need it to go. I can also change the color. So I'm going to make this black instead. And then when I'm happy where it's at, I can just click away from it um, and that column's ready to go. My next one is going to be the grasslands. So same thing, I can just resize it, drag it where I need to move it. If I want to delete it, I can click on the trash can. I can make a copy of it by clicking on the copy icon. And my last one is going to be the Arctic. So let's place that one. Okay, so now that my columns are labeled, next I can add images or I can add text labels. And for this example, I'm going to use images and I'll click here on add image. So I can search Google for an image. And add it to my drag and drop. I can select the size of the image. We'll go with large. And then I can click done and it will add it to my image library over here on the right. 
You'll also notice that I have the option to allow students unlimited copies. So if I needed them to drop, you know, five zebras, then I could leave unlimited copies turned on. If I only want them to select one, I'm going to turn that off. Now I'm going to grab the rest of my images by uploading them from my computer, my Google Drive, my Dropbox, or my OneDrive. Once all of my images are loaded, I'm going to click Save in the bottom right hand corner and my drag and drop is ready to go. So we'll see, here's my drag and drop activity. I'm going to give my lesson a name. And click save and exit. Now let's see what this looks like in student view. In student view, students will view the instructions at the top and then they'll be able to drag and drop the images from the left into the different columns. And you can see because I had, um, I didn't allow them to use each item multiple times that the item disappears when, after they've used it. And that's how you create a drag and drop activity. Before we close out today's episode, I wanted to remind you about the social and emotional learning content that is available for free in your Nearpod account. If you're looking to implement SEL into your classroom, but you're not sure where to begin, check out these lesson packs. Lessons are based on the CASEL SEL framework and include lessons on self-awareness, relationship skills, self-management, social awareness, and responsible decision-making. So that's it for this episode of UEN Nearpod News. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.